Well, hello, welcome again to a reading through of 1 Peter. And I, in uh, chapter 1, I got up to verse 10. I'm going to do this fairly slowly because the Greek of this work, as I mentioned before, is quite sophisticated. Uh, indeed, this uh, verse begins with an example of what's called um, hyperbaton, which is a fancy way of saying that the subject of the or the antecedent, I should say, of the relative pronoun actually comes after the relative pronoun. Now this happens a lot in classical Greek and good, well-trained uh, atticists uh, could do this and used to do this. You won't see it terribly commonly in the New Testament uh, but this particular writer is using this, um, this very high style of Greek, this rhetorical style of Greek. So this uh, verse 10 is and 11 go together. That's quite a long sentence. It's perihes soterias ex etese uh, ex etzetesan kai ex eraunesan prophetai hoi perites es humas caritos prophetusantes eranontes es tina e poion chiron edelu to en autois pneuma Christu, proma tu rominon, ta es Christon pathemata, kai tas meta tauta doxas. So it's regarding the salvation which. Now, in its own clause, this would have to be an accusative, but it's been attracted into the genitive because it's been put before it. But the peri actually go, the word order is peri soterias, and then it would be hain, but it's being attracted into the genitive. This is quite common in rhetorical Greek writing. So, regarding the salvation of which, this is from exatio, which is to seek out thoroughly. The ek, is to seek, and the ek adds to a sense of thoroughness or completeness. So regard to the the salvation which uh, now the sorry the subject is in the next line the prophets those who having prophesied beforehand prophetusantes regarding tes caritas ace humas well with caritas I'm going to translate it as grace it can mean joy so um, or free it can mean free gift I should say so grace. So regarding the grace which is among you, so regarding the salvation which the prophets who prophesied um, before, uh, regarding the grace which is among you, so regarding that salvation, ex et satio, they thoroughly researched it, they thoroughly sought out, and this is from ex eraneo. Uh, Eraneo is to seek out, to examine, is a good translation, and the ek really emphasises it. So they thoroughly examined. So I think the idea here is that the prophets beforehand thoroughly sought out and examined prophecies uh, and the scriptures and so on regarding this salvation. So the prophets, the ones who uh, prophesied before regarding the grace among you, they sought it out. Uh, sorry, they um, yeah, they sought it out and they examined it thoroughly. We get an uncompounded form of the verb up here, just eraneo, and examining it uh, with regard to tina. Now some take this as neuter, I take it as masculine, others do as well. Uh, it makes more sense really. So seeking in regard to whom, or you could be in regard to what, but regard to whom, or poion chiron, what sort of time. Now the subject of the verbs comes next. It's the spirit among you of Christ bearing witness beforehand was making clear uh, the things, the sufferings with regard to the Messiah and the glories 
well, we just say glory here, but it's plural. The glory is after these things. So it's a complicated uh, sentence here, so just to very quickly do that in one go. So regarding the, sac the salvation which the prophets who prophesied beforehand regarding the grace which is among you, which they s sought out and examined thoroughly, examining it with regard to who or at what sort of time the Spirit, which is among you, of Christ, bearing witness beforehand, Edelu was making clear. Uh, sorry, the Spirit beforehand was making clear the sufferings with regard to the Messiah and the glories which came after these things. Hois ape kalufthe hoti uki autoi tois humin de die konun auta ha nun an angele humin dia ton u angelis menon humas en in brackets pneumati hagio apostalenta ap urunu ace ha epithumusi angeloi paracupsi. So, um, to those whom, Hois, it has been revealed, so it's almost to you, or to those whom it has been revealed, that um, not for themselves, but for you, so to whom it has been revealed, that it was not for themselves, but for you, that diaconun, they were doing a service, from diaconio, in respect of these things. So internal accusative here. Things which now have been um, reported to you through those preaching the good news to you, well, it's got in, so perhaps by the Holy Spirit, the one having been sent. This is a aorist passive sedative subjunctive agreeing with the uh, pneumati. The Holy Spirit having been sent from heaven with regard to those things which angels desire, paracupsi from paracupto, well, to look into, to peer into. Paracupto has that sense of bending down and peering in as though you were looking into a cave. Uh, it's got the idea of bending down. It's often translated as look, to look into or to peer into. So again, a long, tricky sentence here. I'll just do that bit again. So it's something like, it's to you really, the ones whom it has been revealed that... Uh, they were doing, uh, or they were um, doing a service, or serving these things, not for themselves, but for you. The things which now have been reported to you, through the ones proclaiming the good news to you, with or by the Holy Spirit, who had been has been sent from heaven, with regard to things which angels desire to look into, to know about, to peer into. The next little uh, paragraph, next section here, the editor here has put the heading, A Call to Holy Living. Uh, so the first section was all about all of the was looking back to the Old Testament prophets essentially and saying it's all saying to the audience of this work that it was really all about you and now as a consequence of that the author is now saying well you now have to uh, make sure you live pure lives dio ana tsarmenoi tas osfuas tes dianoius humon nephontes Teleos el pisete epitain feromenain humin carin en apocalypse Jesu Christu. 
as I mentioned before, all the way through, we either get Christ or we get Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah. We don't get the other order that you often get in other writers. Paul sometimes uses this, sometimes the reverse, and similarly in other writers. So, diot for dia plus hot, for which reason? Now, anatso saminos is from anatso numi. It means um, having girded tas osphuas your loins. Literally, having girded the loins of your dia noias of your intentions, of your minds. Girding your loins is an Old Testament, it's not a Greek uh, idiom, it's an Old Testament Hebraic idiom. Uh, and it's a metaphor for getting yourself ready, it's sort of like putting your pants and your belt on and getting yourself ready to go. So wherefore, having girded the loins of your thoughts, the annoy us, nephontes is from nepho, which is a word meaning to remain sober, as in not being drunk. So, being sober, teleos, um, fully or completely, elpisate, that's an aorist imperative from elpisdo, hope in the, the charis, the grace which is being brought or being carried, passive from Pharaoh, whom in to you, um, well, in, probably in or perhaps by the revelation, the revealing of Jesus the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. Hos tekna hupakoes me suskema tidzominoi tais proteron ente agnoia humon epithumiais. Allah. Cataton kalesan tahumas hagion kai autoi hagioi en passe anastrophe genethete dioti gegraptoi hoti hagioi esses the hoti ego hagios and in brackets amy. So, um, like children uh, of obedience. Now that again is a slight Hebraism, we would say like obedient children. Uh, the, if, if this were in Hebrew, this is a very Hebraic expression, I think. Hebrew doesn't have a lot of adjectives, and so they often express things where we and Greek would use adjectives. They do it by using um, expressions like this. So like children of obedience. In other words, like obedient children may uh, not with a participle now this is a very late greek word it does occur in romans 12 2. the verb is um, suskematisdomai so it's a combination of sun plus schematisdo schematisdomai it means something like be shaped or molded um, together or in some certain pattern so it's not being shaped or molded uh, in along with those uh, desires, or perhaps by those desires, the tice is separated from the epithumias, the ones which were previously, which you previously were in your ignorance. So, um, but like obedient children, not perhaps conforming or um, uh, being moulded or conforming with the desires you had previously in your ignorance, Allah, but according to the one having called you, and I think Hagion goes with the ton callus santa, so, but according to the Holy One who has called you, you yourselves also, genethete, become hagioi, become holy, en passe anastrophe. Now, anastrophe is a standard uh, word in Greek, it's an abstract noun. It means conduct or manner of life. It's the way your twistings and turnings, it's connected with strepho to turn. 
So it's conduct or your manner of life, but it is a, I think it's a fairly common word in, I think I've seen it in classical Greek as well, I'll have to check that. So you yourselves be holy, become holy uh, in each, uh, in all of your conduct, literally in each um, uh, conduct of your life. So we would say in all your conduct. The oti, um, well, literally it's dear plus hoti because it is written that, or we will often translate the hoti as wherefore, wherefore it has been written, and then we've got hoti in brackets, it's recitative if anything, so you wouldn't translate it anyway. So wherefore it has been written, perfect from grapho, perfect passive, uh, Hagioi SS there, be holy, this is an imperative, you will be holy, it's a future, well it's actually not an imperative, but it's the future isn't it from Amy, so you will be holy, and in, it's a quotation, they often use the future for a command in uh, the Old Testament and in Septuagint, so be holy because I, and Amy in brackets, I am holy, and we have a quotation there from Leviticus, 11.44 um, and elsewhere I think 19.2 it's the same quotation here uh, so be, hol be holy L literally you will be holy because I am holy and that is the next section of chapter 1